Hi, I'm Helen from Team Alicia, and today we are back with a new episode of our My Ocean Challenge video series. If you've been watching our videos, you will have discovered many incredible ecosystems, such as the beautiful coral reefs of Guadeloupe and the fascinating Atlantic forest of Brazil. You will have also learned that our Militia CX Pro is not only a racing yacht, but a research vessel too, as we collect valuable ocean data during our races to help scientists better understand the ocean and climate change. Today, I am taking you on a journey to discover how not only Boros, but also many ecosystems help scientists comprehend how our Earth and its climate have evolved. We call them climate detectives. To understand the world around us, scientists need data. Data is like little bits of information we collect to understand things better. Imagine we're trying to learn about the ocean and its temperature. If we measure the water temperature every day for a week and write it down, like 20 degrees Celsius on Monday, 21 degrees on Tuesday, and so on, that's data. Scientists use data like this to understand how the ocean is changing. For example, if the water gets warmer over many years, it might be a sign of climate change, which can affect animals like fish and coral reefs. So, data helps us take care of the ocean and the planet. There are three kinds of data. The first is direct observations. This means going out into the real world and collecting data by measuring things, usually with a special tool or device. You can measure many things, for example, temperature, rainfall, or how the ocean currents move. This can be done during field trips, using research ships, weather stations, or even racing yachts like our Militia Sea Explorer. Yes, while racing around the world, our skipper Boris directly measures CO2 levels in the ocean using a device called the Ocean Pack, a small lab on board our boat. The second way scientists can study our world is by using estimated data. This happens when they can't measure something directly. For example, the ocean is so huge that it is impossible to take measurements everywhere. So, scientists take the data they already have, put it into powerful computers and use very complicated math to make estimates, which are educated guesses about what the rest of the ocean might be like. This is super helpful, but it's not perfect. That's why direct data is still really important and why scientists are happy that Team Alicia collects ocean data in some of the most remote places on Earth, where no one else goes. By doing so, Boris and our team are adding more pieces to the puzzle. This helps everyone get a clearer picture of what's happening in our ocean. Finally, there's a third way researchers can get data. Indirect measurements. And this is where climate detectives come into play. Climate detectives aren't people. They are natural recorders like ice cores or coral reefs, which hold information about what the climate was like a long time ago. They act as nature's time capsules, giving clues or indirect data about the climate of the past. The amazing thing about them is that they reveal what happened thousands or even millions of years ago. Direct data, like what Boris collects, shows us what's happening right now, or for only as long as people have been measuring things, just a few hundred years at most. But climate detectives can go way, way further back in time. So, who are these climate detectives, and what clues do they give us? Let's start with the one from the coldest places on Earth, high in the mountains and near the poles, ice cores. Those are long cylinders of ice that scientists drill out from glaciers or ice sheets. Inside these cores are layers of ice that have formed over the years. Those layers hold information about how much snow fell, what the temperature was like, or where the wind was blowing from. The ice also locks away tiny air bubbles, which trap gases from the atmosphere, such as CO2, and allow scientists to learn what the air was like in the past. They might even find volcanic ash trapped in the ice core, revealing clues about volcano eruptions. Another climate detective is sediment cores. These are tubes of mud or sand that scientists take from the bottom of lakes, rivers or the ocean. This mud or sediment is made up of tiny pieces of dirt, sand and rocks, and even bits of plants and shells. 
Over time, they get carried by wind, rivers or the ocean and settle at the bottom, blocking away information about what the climate was like tens of millions of years ago. A cool example is foraminifera, also known as forams. Those are tiny creatures with shells that thrive in specific water temperatures or depths and fall to the ocean floor when they die. By studying their shells in sediment cores, scientists can get indirect data about how warm or salty the water was, how much CO2 was in the ocean, and even if Earth was in an ice age. Do you remember the coral reefs from our first video? They are climate detectives too. As they grow, corals store information in their skeletons about the temperature of the water, how acidic or salty it was, and even if there were storms. Since corals grow in sunlit and shallow waters, scientists can also use their age and location to reconstruct past sea levels. Now, back on land. Look around you. Do you see any trees? Well, tree rings are also climate detectives. In much of Europe, the USA, parts of Canada or Australia, trees grow a ring each year. When the weather is warm and wet, the tree grows a thick ring. When it's cold or dry, the ring is thinner. By counting the rings and looking at their thickness, scientists can learn how old the tree is and what the weather was that year. Some trees can live for hundreds or even thousands of years, giving us a long history of climate changes. There are many other climate detectives, such as pollen from plants or rock formations in caves. But why does it matter to know how the climate changed a long time ago? Changes in the Earth's climate are natural and have been happening for millions of years. Understanding them is important because it helps us see how the environment reacted to warmer or cooler periods. For example, when the Earth warmed in the past, ice melted, sea levels rose and some animals had to move or even disappeared. Right now, the Earth is warming faster than ever because of human activities which release unnaturally large amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere. By studying the past, scientists can predict what might happen in the future. This knowledge helps us prepare for changes, protect ecosystems and make better decisions to take care of our planet. So, next time you see a cut down tree, take a closer look. Can you spot the differences in the thickness of its rings? Try counting how many rings they are. That tells you how old the tree is. Let us know where you found this climate detective and what you discovered about it. We can't wait to hear from you and we'll explore more fascinating things together in our next video. Stay curious and see you soon.